I'm Josh, and in this video I'd like to walk you through how I put together a simple patch on the Synthstrom Deluge. In this case, it's going to be a pad made with saw waves, which can create some tonal ambience underneath lead instruments. The sound of saw waves, ever so slightly detuned from one another, can feel a bit like a string instrument. Now, this video will be targeted more towards beginners with the Deluge, and with that in mind, let's jump in. To begin with, while in clip view, we'll hold shift and press, oops, I nudged the wheel. We'll hold shift and press synth to create a new instrument. By default, the Deluge's synth engine will use subtractive synthesis, which as the name implies is sound sculpting done by removing tones with filters to change the quality of the sound. We don't need to change the synthesizer type for this, just a random bit of info. Anyway, our pad will use two saw wave oscillator oscillators, and I like to start with the oscillator settings. So we'll hold shift and press type for oscillator one and then rotate the center knob boop, boop, until it says saw. That's how the W looks on the, uh, on the W screen. It might be a bit unusual. If I tap one of the audition pads, you'll now be able to hear that saw wave tone. Next, we'll hold shift and press the level button for oscillator two. Bam. And I'm gonna turn this up all the way to maximum. So that's gonna be 50. All right. And like with the first oscillator, I'll hold shift and press type and turn until it says saw. So now when I hit the audition pads, we'll have two saw waves playing together. Next, we're going to transpose them ever so slightly out of tune with one another. So first I'm gonna hold shift and hit transpose for oscillator one. I'll use the horizontal scroll knob to highlight the hundredths place and turn it to 0 0.05. Next, I'll hold shift and hit transpose for oscillator two. And like before, I'll go over there using the horizontal turning, the horizontal knob, except this time I'm going to turn it down to negative 0.05. So now, if we listen to them together, you can hear how there's a little bit more texture with the uh, slight Next, I'm going to hold shift and press oscillator sync and turn that, bam, to on. What does this do? Well, both oscillators are making slightly different sound waves, which means each one is going to go at a different speed. When the oscillator sync is turned on, both sounds will be re-triggered or restarted anytime you trigger a note. If it's off, the peaks and valleys of the sounds made by each oscillator can drift in and out of sync. So to give you an idea of it, this is how it sounds with the oscillator sync off. And with the oscillator sync on, And I do want to clarify, I'm turning on oscillator sync for this particular patch. That does not mean that everything should have oscillator sync on. When you're playing around with sound sculpting, I really recommend that you just, like I said, play. Try out, turn settings on, hit a few pads, see how it sounds. If you like it, cool. If you don't, change it. Anyway, moving on, we're going to go into the filters. In this case, we're going to be using a low-pass filter to mellow out the sound. A low-pass filter cuts back on the high tones and, as the name suggests, only lets low notes pass through it. So I'm going to hold Shift, pow. And over here, it might be tough to see, but in this filter section, this first one is labeled LPF for low-pass filter. I'm going to hold Shift and hit Frequency. By default, the low-pass filter is turned off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tap the audition pads as I change it so you can hear how it changes the sound. For now, I'm going to say 35 seems like a decent place to leave it. You can also change filter settings by tapping the cutoff and FM section in these effects and turning this top knob. And in fact, if I open up 
the frequency of the low pass filter, you can see that when I turn the gold knob, that'll go up and down. I'm gonna set it back to 35. Cool. Our final bit of tinkering will be with the ADSR or attack, decay, sustain, release. For the volume of our sound, these will describe how that volume behaves. Attack will be how long the volume takes to reach its maximum value after we trigger the note. Decay is how long the volume takes to fade out to its sustain level. Sustain is the volume the note stays at while it's held, and then release is how quickly the note fades to silence after you stop holding it down. The term attack, decay, sustain, release, I'm using it for volume. It can also be applied to other settings. You could, for instance, have a low pass filter that is triggered to when you hit the note to have an attack to fade in, to have a decay to then fade back out, a sustain to stay at a certain level, and then a release to have the low pass filter fade out along with the note. For now, you don't need to worry about that too much. I just wanted to make it clear that it's not only a volume thing. It can be applied to other settings. Under the envelope one section, we're going to hold shift and I'll start with the attack. I've highlighted attack and I want you to hear, oops, I want you to hear, now I'm gonna dial this one up to, I'm just gonna dial it up all the way to 50 so you can hear. Now this is how it sounds at 50. And if I dial it back down, this is how it sounds at zero. So can you hear how at 50, when I press this, it fades in. For this, we can leave the decay and sustain settings at their default levels. Instead, we're going to change the release. So I'll hold shift in the envelope one section. I'm gonna tap release. Like before, here it is well, with the attack at zero, or with the attack at 50, but the release at zero. So the moment I let go, the sound cuts off. I'm gonna turn the release up. I'm gonna turn it up to 30, and let's hear. So I'm holding it down, and I let go, and it still rings out a little bit afterwards. Now I'm gonna leave it at 30. Something I like to do, and I wanna make it clear right now, I know I'm talking a lot of, you know, sound waves and numbers and this and that. Making something that to you sounds good is every bit in art as much as it is a science. Sometimes I like to dial in a little bit of reverb. I feel that it gives the sound presence. It feels more like the sound is existing in a physical space. Let me turn it up so you can hear it a bit better. All right. With that, we've pretty much put together this very simple saw pad. The last thing to do, and this is very important to do with your presets on the Deluge, if you turn it off without saving, it's gonna delete everything you worked on. So you hold save and press set. And now this turns into a QWERTY keyboard. Uh, and I, I want you to appreciate that I'm gonna try to type on it well, but because of where the tripod is, my head is off at an angle, so it's a bit hard to see what every key is, but I'll name it saw Where's my P? Why do I not know keyboards? Saw pad. And then if I just hit save again, it's done. And you can see on the screen here now it's labeled saw pad. Maybe I'd like to add it. Put the pad down there. I'll go into a song. I'll add a clip with drums. And I'll add a little, a little doodad up in the higher octave.
if that was the first patch that you've made, I mean, first of all, I'm really honored that you chose this video to be the first patch you put together on your deluge, but also, hey, congratulations. If you can't tell, I am still learning the ins and outs of this instrument. I definitely, I'm not trying to come off as someone who feels that they've mastered it. I just wanted to share sort of a walkthrough. I felt that at the time that I got the deluge, there wasn't, I had a hard time finding a lot of videos that very precisely walked through settings. So once I felt like I could make something like that, and, and I hope this isn't egotistical of me to say, I wanted to try and create the video that I would have liked to see right after I got it. Anyway, to cap off, the Deluge is a wildly powerful sound sculpting platform, and I do hope in future videos to dig a little bit deeper and show some more complex tricks relating to sound design on it. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, leave a comment, let me know, subscribe if you'd like to see more music content in the future. I do have more content planned with the Deluge as well as some other instruments and music production things. But for now, thanks so much for watching and keep making music.